he keeps on saying all of a sudden that everything tastes just like chocolate. Remember, he had chocolate toast, he said, with chocolate butter, and it was chocolate milk. Well, chocolate milk isn't a weird thing, because chocolate milk really is a real thing. But that was just... that's the point. So he thinks everything's tasting like chocolate all of a sudden. And remember, he was really, he ate the whole tube of toothpaste. Remember, he met that weird guy that knew his name. He got the one piece of chocolate. So odd. Dun, dun, dun. I don't know. Maybe he did eat his hands right near. That's what it kind of looks like. But maybe there's a bite taken out of the glove. I don't know. All right. John had bad habits of chewing on things when he was thinking hard. This morning, he had several things to think about. What had made toothpaste taste like chocolate? What had made the orange juice taste like chocolate? What had made the bacon and eggs taste like chocolate? What had made the toast, butter, and marmalade taste like chocolate? Each one of these things had felt the way it had always before. The toothpaste had been soft and pasty. The bacon had been hot, crispy, and oily. The toast had been crunchy and marmalade sticky and lumpy. Everything had tasted like chocolate he had eaten in bed last night. So he's saying they have the same texture. Like you can still feel the crunch of the bacon, but for some reason it just tastes like chocolate. John put his glove, his glove thumb in his mouth and thoroughly thoughtfully chewed. His mother had frequently pointed out to him that chewing his gloves made little holes that let in cold air, but he chewed them just the same when he was thinking hard. This time he noticed something very queer about the thumb of his glove. Instead of tasting leathery, it tasted like chocolate. John pulled his thumb out of his mouth. The part of the glove he, that had been in his mouth was now brown instead of black like the rest. He bit the end of the leather thumb again. It came right off in his mouth. One thumb bare. John chewed and it was like chewing leather made of leather that melted like chocolate. In a second or two, he swallowed it. Okay, so Mr. Um, Rainier's prediction was correct. He apparently is uh, eating his thumb of his glove and it tastes like chocolate too who knows the gloves were not new john had had them quite a while he couldn't understand why he had never thought of eating them before um who eats their gloves no one that's silly of course you haven't thought of eating it before he couldn't understand why he had never thought of eating them before he tried to tear off one of the fingers but the leather was too strong strong for him he put it in his mouth and immediately it turned it immediately turned into chocolate he was able to break it off easily he popped it into his mouth and chewed it up and swallowed it it was delicious okay so when he's just like pulling at the gloves it's leather leather's very tough and he's not able to get it apart but if he puts it in his mouth it just breaks right off like chocolate walking along devouring his gloves john did not notice one of his school fellows spider wilson until he heard his voice. John's gone crazy. John's gone crazy, Spider yelled. Then he turned on John. Don't they feed you where you live? He sneered. Spider was in a grade just above John's and was one of the meanest and slyest boys in the whole school. John gulped down a large piece of the second gloves palm and looked pleased. What's the matter, Spider demanded. Do your people make you eat leather? This is special leather, John replied. He licked his lips and sighed contently. It turns into chocolate as soon as you put it into your mouth. Look, John bit off the gloves, little finger, and took it out of his mouth. Now it's chocolate. And he put it back in his mouth and gulped it down. Give me a piece, Spider said. Why should I? John wanted to know. They're my gloves. Hand over a piece, Spider said. Do I eat your gloves? John asked responsibly. Reasonably, his mouth full of chocolate. Why should you eat mine? Those aren't real gloves, Spider said. Whenever one person has candy, he has to share it with others. That's the club rule. What club? John asked. Never mind what club, Spider said. But you better let me have some of that chocolate. Without waiting longer, Spider snatched those left to the second glove. John was too surprised to resist, and he didn't want to anyhow. He had a feeling that he'd have enough chocolate for a while. He was getting a bit thirsty. Spider ran only a little way ahead. When he saw John wasn't going to fight to get... The glove back he started to eat his prize he stuffed the letter in his mouth and took a big bite spider stopped short in his track he frowned and bit deep into the letter did again disgusting it tasted worse than leather it tasted like a leather with which 
a boy had made mud pies and snowballs and petted old dogs. John thought perhaps he might be getting late for school, so he started running. He left Spider Wilson spitting the soggy remains of the glove into the gutter. So when Mr. Spider took a bite of the glove, did it turn to chocolate? Nope, it's still just regular leather, so why did it turn to chocolate for John? I don't know, but it did not for other people. Still giggling to himself about the defeat of the enemy, John walked between the great stone pillars at the entrance to the school grounds. He had gone no more than halfway to the main building when he heard Susan Buttercup calling him. She was standing near the jungle gym with some of her friends. I've got something to show you, John, she shouted. As she came running to meet him, he could see that she was waving something in her hand that flashed as it caught the rays of sun. It was a silver dollar. It's my birthday present. She exclaimed, showing him the dollar. Isn't it beautiful? The sight of such wealth made John forget the triumphs of his own day. It's a good present, he said. Are you sure it's made of silver, though? I once got a whole bag of gold coins and Christmas stocking. Only they were chocolate coins covered with gold paper. Of course it's real silly, Susan said. My daddy said so. You can kill it if you don't believe me. She handed him the coin. John looked at the coin suspiciously. All right, Susan said, bite it if you think it isn't real. Go on, bite it. John felt rather silly. I can see it's real now, he said. I don't have to bite it. Can someone give me a little prediction right here? What's going to happen if John bites the silver coin of his friend Susan's? Type it in the chat for me. What could potentially happen? I don't know if you guys have ever seen in movies or ever like heard the expression when people like you can bite on like metal or coins to see if they're real. But if he's going to bite on it, um, it might turn into chocolate. And then like it was Susan's birthday gift. I'd be upset if my birthday gift randomly turned into chocolate. But I want you to, Susan insisted. You weren't sure. Well, make sure. That's what they always do on television. When a cowboy wants to make sure a dollar's real, he bites it. John put the dollar about halfway into his mouth and reluctantly bit it. His teeth went right through the corn. The part he had, ha, ugh, the part that had passed between his lips was hard, but sweet chocolate. Susan could hardly believe her eyes. She had given John a complete circle of silver. He sadly handed back a crescent. So it's crescent shaped now because he just took a big old chunk out of it. John didn't know what to say. Susan couldn't speak. Tears trickled down her cheeks like raindrops with a window down a window pane. She looked at the piece of dollar in her hand. She looked up at John, whose face was red with embarrassment. John Midas, Susan blurted out the last blurted out at last. I hate you. She turned and ran away before John could think of anything at all to say. Okay, so nice lovely silver dollar that she got for her birthday. She handed it to him and was like, bite it, it's real. And then it turned to chocolate and now she doesn't have a silver dollar and she's so sad. But yeah, you're right, Nikki Lim. She's the one that said bite it. I mean, obviously she didn't think that was going to happen, but hey, you know, who knew? Chapter five. We are now on page 55, chapter five. John hung up his coat, got his notebook and pencil out of his locker, and sat down at the small table just in time for the second bell. When Miss Pimsel walked silently into the class, silently into the classroom, as soon as she appeared in the doorway, all the chattering and scuffling stopped. The twenty boys and girls sat straight in their chairs and looked straight ahead at the clean chalkboard. Good morning, children, Miss Pimsel said. Good morning, Miss Pimsel, the cat the class answered respectfully. Miss Pimsel sat on her high desk, blinking her eyes as she surveyed the room. Then she opened a little drawer in her desk and pulled out a pulled out a spectacles case from which she took her reading glasses. She removed her long distance glasses, put on her short distance glasses, snapped shut the spectacles case, replaced it in the drawer, shut the drawer, tilted her head forward so she had to look over the glasses on her nose and said, good morning, children. We are going to have an important test. Can someone tell me what spectacles mean? Before I continue on, what's spectacles? What are spectacles? Glasses, yep. So her spectacles case, just a glasses case. 
There were some groans and a few oohs and ahs. Miss Pilmsel lifted up one of her hands and silence was restored instantly. No complaining, please, she said sternly. This test will show me how well you have been learning your arithmetic this year. It will be a short one. I'm going to write just four problems on the board. What's arithmetic, guys? We learn it every day. What's arithmetic? Anyone else? Anyone want to give me a guess? What's arithmetic? Hi, Isaac. Isaac, we're on page 57. What's arithmetic, my friends? You can use some context clues. I'm going to write just four problems on the board. What subject has problems? Type in my chat. Math, you're right, yep. So arithmetic is another name for math. So she's gonna see how well they've learned their math this year. I shall expect you to solve them all swiftly and accurately and to write your answers neatly. You will place your paper in front. You will place your paper in front of you now. You will write your name at the top right hand corner. And then you will place your pencil beside your paper, sit back in your chair and wait until I give you the signal to begin work. Miss Pilmsel turned to the chalkboard and began chalking up the test problems. I don't know about you, but this teacher seems real strict, strict, strict. Tess always made Jen nervous. Besides, his lips were feeling dry and the taste of chocolate was strong in his mouth. He raised his hand. Yes, John, Miss Pilmsel asked. Please, may I have a drink of water, please, Miss Pilmsel, he asked in a small voice. Very well, hurry back. We're going to start in a few minutes. John gratefully slipped out of the room and walked quickly down the quiet corridor to the water fountain. His tongue felt thick with chocolate. The water would be refreshing. He pressed his foot down on the fountain throttle and a stream of clear, cool, a stream of clear, ice cold water spurted from the silver nozzle in the white enamel basin. He lowered his head until the jet of water reached his lips. The cold water splashed delightfully against the outside of his mouth. He opened his lips. As soon as the water gushed in, it turned into ice cold chocolate water, thin and sweet. Quickly stopping the flow, John looked with dismay at the shallow puddle that had formed and that was now draining away in the basin of the fountain. He hurried to another fountain on the second floor of the building, and the same thing happened. The clear, ice-cold water turned to liquid chocolate in his mouth. Okay, so now water is even turning to chocolate. So he's probably getting super, super thirsty if the only thing he's having is um, chocolate. John finally got back to his classroom and all his pupils were bent over their tables, busily scratching away. Miss Pilmsel looked up from her book as John tiptoed in. She looked at the clock on the wall, looked at him and wagged her finger reprovisingly. So she's like, chur, 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 like, you know, you took too long. John began on the first of the four problems, but he was so worried about the chocolate water that he couldn't keep his mind on work. By the time he was ready to start the fourth problem, the other boys and girls were already putting down their pencils and straightening up and smiling at each other. Two minutes to go, said Miss Pilmsel. Concentrating hard, John took the end of his pencil between his teeth and began to nibble it. It immediately turned to chocolate. Then he noticed an even more disturbing change. Although he had taken the pencil out of his mouth, as soon as the first piece of chocolate had crumbled off, the pencil was continuing to change to chocolate. The chocolate was slowly but steadily moving down the pencil, replacing the wood with lead inside, changing it into chocolate pencil before John's various eyes. The magic for John now knew that his power must be magic was apparently getting stronger. Okay, so he just like, you know, put the end of the pencil in his mouth and then he took it out and it's just turning to chocolate. Is he going to be able to finish a math pro or a math test with a chocolate pencil? No, that's going to be hard. You can't write in chocolate. By the time the whole pencil had changed from red, yellow, and black to dark brown, Miss Pilmsel was announcing that only a few seconds remained in which to write down the final answer. Oh, here's a picture. You can see John's raising his hand, like looking worried. Um, dun, 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 dun. Just a minute, John pleaded. Shh, Miss Pilmsel cautioned him, holding a finger up at her mouth. Shh, of course, just slow workers but who were becoming almost excited as john 
But John felt the worst of all. He felt sure that he could finish the problem and write down the correct answer if only he had something to write with. But Miss Pimsel, he begged in a loud whisper, my pencil turned to chocolate. Hush, John, Miss Pimsel said. I'll speak to you after the bell. John tried to write what he, what his, John tried to write with his changed pencil. But the point was too soft and only succeeded to make the chocolate smear where he should have written 72. All right, we are going to stop there. So John is clearly not having a very successful day. His day started out fantastic because he got to eat chocolate toothpaste and chocolate eggs and bacon and all that. But then he accidentally ate his gloves. Well, not accidentally. Once he tasted his gloves, he thought they were great. That guy spider thinks he's crazy. He accidentally ate his best friend's birthday present. But then he tried to get water because he's so thirsty. Can't get water. And now he doesn't get to finish his math test because he has a chocolate pencil. So this poor guy's day is clearly not turning out to be so great. We still have 11 minutes left in class. So that means you have 11 minutes to go work on your question and answers. Remember, it's helpful to stay up with us. That means you have four question and answers to do today. Make sure they are coming from each chapter, okay? So make sure your chapter four questions are only coming from chapter four. Your chapter five are only coming from chapter five. Remember, you're writing the question and the answer in complete sentences. So you are free to do that for the next 11 minutes. You're free to go work. You can log off and work on your questions and answers. Remember, your questions and answers will be due the day after we finish this book, which we're going to finish the book sometime next week, okay? So you guys can leave. We just read chapters four and five, Gage. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Miss Knife. Yes. I did I just finished my questions because I was doing them and reading along. So can I go and read some AR books? Yep. All right. Bye. See you later. Bye. You gotta show me. Bye. I will get you on it one second. Bye guys. Nikila, I'll show you in third hour.